morning everyone. For this video, we are going to discuss about the Philippine arts during Spanish colonial period and what are the changes from the arts of the Islamic period to the Spanish colonial period. So keep on watching! With the coming of the Spaniards, who brought Western musical instruments like the pipe organ, the violin, the guitar, and the piano, Philippine music musical forms also took in a very Euro European flavor with the new rhythms, melodies, and musical forms that Filipinos proceeded to adapt them and make their own. Catholic liturgical music was introduced in 1742 when the then Archbishop of Manila, Juan Rodriguez Angel, established a singing school at the Manila Cathedral that taught Western church music. Its curriculum was patterned after that of the, Mad of the Madrid Conservatory of Music. The Santo Domingo and San Agustin Convent would soon teach choral music to young boys and would soon create Filipino composers like Marcelo Adunay in the year 1848 to 1928. So, outside of Manila, a musical form based on the Catholic faith would emerge in the Passion or Pabasta, as it is sometimes called, or the Biblical narration of Christ's Passion, chanted in an improvised melody. It is a tradition that has survived to this day. Atonal and repetitive, the melody is sometimes read and chanted to the tune of love songs, popular with younger readers who would otherwise spark uh, this activity in the other ways, as this could this could last for the entire length of Holy Week. This practice is evident in areas like San Palo, a contemporary neighborhood of the city of Manila. Among the lowland Christian communities of Pampanga, Ilocos, Bicol, and Iloilo, secular music firms such as the Awit and the Corrido soon flourish. These were musical firms that were chanted stories based on European literature and history and were popular even among the this century, following the verses purely by rope. At this time, the Condiman and the Balitao, Balitao sentimental love songs and lullabies also evolved. During the latter half of the 19th century, when, when revolutionary sentiment began to develop, the Condiman which usually spoke of resignation and fatalism, became a vehicle of re resistance. For all intents and purposes, the lyrics were that of unrequited love, except that the love object of the Philippines would be cleverly concealed as a beautiful woman. This is demonstrated in such songs as Condiman ni Abdon, or the Abdon's love song. A condiment which became a feature of protest actions against martial law during the 70s and the, the still popular Bayansko or My Country, a condiment which experienced renewed popular popularity during the Edsa, the Edsa Powell People Power Revolution of 1986. Local theory reforms would develop earlier than literary fiction. The shamanistic rituals, dances, and chants of pre colonial Philippines, which were probably the earliest forms of theater, were replaced by the pomp and pageantry of religious processions that were introduced by the Spanish colonizers, complete with highly embellished carrozas containing religious tablets of Catholic saints and scenes from the Bible. During the 19th century, a popular form of theater or musical theater was imported from Spain. The Zarzuela or Sarzuela was an operetta which features singing and dancing interpressed with prose dialogue which allowed the story to be carried out in the song. The first Zarzuelas that were staged in the Philippines were libretos in the local language. Hence, the term Sarzuela Severo, Severino Reyes, and Hermogenes Ilagan, who wrote Sarsuelas. In Tagalog, were the most distinguished parents of their day, 
with Honorata Atangelarama, a national artist for theater and music, awarded in, from 1987 as their most celebrated leading actress. The first Sinaclo or fashion play was written in 1704 by Gaspar Aquino de Belen. Its narrative was killed entirely from the biblical account of Christ's passion and death on the cross. Adapted into verse, form, and translated into local language. It's formed during Lent and in some cases. The Comedia, Comedy or Comedia, is another local theater that was emerged during this period. The Comedia depicts the conflict between the Muslims and Christians. One type was the Comedia de Santo, or religious comedia. It centers the life of Christ of any saint. The actors move in a stylized way, have ex extra extravagant costumes, and elaborately choreographed war scenes. The word moro is derived from a from the 8th to the 15th century. A typical Moro, Moro story would usually involve a love story, story, love story between a Christian hero and a, and a Islamic heroine or vice versa. Centuries of the Galleon trade between Mexico and the Philippines also served not only as a means of governance for Spain, the trade in a vice reality arrangement also brought Mexican influences in the Philippines, folk music, and dance. Folk dances such as Cariñosa, Pandangor, Fandango, Polka, Danza, and the Rigodon carry traces of the Habanera, Jota, and Tango dances from Spain and its colonies. During the American period, which will be discussed in the next section, Western ballet would also find its way to the Philippines. The picture of the Spanish colonial period, to carry out the project of colonization and Christianization, the native were possibly resettled the town structured according to the plaza complex. The disrelocating becomes a means of organizing and gaining control of the native populace. The complex was designed as a town center and consisted of the municipio or locate local government office and the church. Designed according to the prescription of the Spanish crown, the church established its importance in people's life through its imposing skills and overall visual appeal. So during the uh, Islamic period, the, the artisan built a mosque for, for the Muslim. So in, this, in the Spanish period, the art is now uh, in the Spanish colonial period, the artisan make uh, churches and buildings for the Christians. And during this period, cruciform churches following the shapes of the Latin cross were built. In keeping with the prevailing design of the Hispanic, Hispanic, Hispanic churches, the Baroque style was predominantly employed. They were characterized by a winter drama and elaborate details that purposely appealed to the emotion. An example of the Baroque churches are the San Agustin Church in Manila, Morong Church in Rizal, Poi Church in Ilocos Norte, and Santo Tomas de Villanueva Church in Mio, Iloilo. Although the design are European inspired, local intervention have been employed in order to suit native sensibilities and adjust the local environment condition. Uh, in making this uh, magnificent building, the artisan makes sure the presence of uh, branded materials. The use of adobe, limestone or bricks and construction of the thick buttress or wing-like projection reinforce the church structure to make it more resistant to the earthquake. In other words, the result is a fusion of both native and European elements, prompting some art historian to, to refer to the style as the colonial borough or the Philippine or tropical borough. For other architectural uh, uh, designs, the rise of this new elite would also manifest in the town organization. Among those that occupied the plaza complex were the Bahai Nabato, which used, which housed rich and prominent families. The reprographic part of print media was introduced in the Philippines 
As early as the 16th century, applying the technique of xylography or woodcut printing, doctrina cristiana, the teachings of Christianity, was printed in 1953 in Spanish and in, in Tagalog by Dominican Christ. Doctrina is the first printed book in the Philippines, compiling song, lyrics, commandments, sacraments, and other catechetical materials. Aside from prayer booklets called Estampas and its smaller counterpart, Estampitas, printmaking, particularly engraving, was developed to produce secular or non-religious work. Although religious art predominated during the Spanish colonial period, some of the other best forms of art that flourished were non-religious or secular. In 1734, the Jesuit prize, Father Pedro Morelio Velarde collaborated with homegrown talents, the artist Francisco Suarez and the engraver Nicolas de la Cruz Bagay to produce Carta Hydrographica e Corographica de las Islas Filipinas. Bill Pius, Suarez and de la Cruz Bagas were among the first to acknowledge their roles as artists by signing their names at the bottom of the map. Other known engravers include Dariano Atlas, the Felipe Sevilla, who also produced religious images. The development of lithography facilitated the reproduction of color plates as well as the mass printing of newspapers and periodicals. The Augustinian botanist Father Manuel Blanco produced an extensive compilation of Philippines plants in Flora de Filipinas in 1878. So the images of saints and interpretations of biblical narratives were considered essential for worshiping. So uh, these images are made of are produced through painting, sculpting, and engraved, engraving. So these images that they are worshiping are called santos or santo that would be based on classical and baroque models. So during the 17th century, Chinese artisans uh, under Spanish Spanish supervision were engaged in making icons or saints or what we call santos in the vernacular. So in wood on in ivory, building churches and houses as well as making furniture. So an example is a painting of uh, Nuestra Señora del Rosario in Bohol or the image of which was said to be inspired from Kuan Yin or the deity of mercy in East Asian Buddhism. The Greek and Roman classical influence can be seen in the proportion employed as well as the formality of the expression, while the trace of the Baroque is evident in the expressive and, and emotional characteristics of Santo. In colonial churches, Santos are displayed in a decorative altar niche called retablo. So this retablo integrates architecture and sculpture and is often embellished with rosettes, scrolls, pediments, and Solomonic inclusions in colonial churches which are presented either as a series of 14 paintings so or relief sculptures depicting Christ's crucifixion and resurrection so images of Holy Mary the Virgin Mary and the four evangelists pro proliferate in the ceilings and walls of the church so and sometimes in the ornate manner of Trompe El Oel, as seen as at the Taal Basilica in Batangas or at the St. James the Apostle Parish in Betis, Pampanga. So it refers to paintings that give a heightened illusion of three-dimensionality. Church altars are sometimes the organic designs of hammered silver or the plateria. The plateria technique is also applied in the body of Carosa, where the santos are paraded during town processions. In the visual arts, paintings serve an instructive function through visual interpretation of biblical texts central to Catholic devotion. An example is Heaven, Earth, and Hell, 1850, a mural by Jose Dance in Paete Church, Laguna. A map of the universe features a terrifying de depiction of hell. So, 
the painting seems to warn that a sinful life on earth would lead to torment and eternal dam damnation. In other, another part of the church, we see two versions of San Cristobal. The more strange depiction of the saint was painted on a wooden panel, and it was discovered later on that this version concealed an earlier work of the same subject painted, painted directly on the wall or what we call fresco. In this version, the saint appears more native looking and ordinary. Professor Brenda Fajardo proposes that the priors might, might have disapproved the fresco so it was covered with a more acceptable port portrayal of the saint. So, such relations are at work is the Basi Revolt, a series of 14 paintings by Esteban Villanueva. So, it chronicles the defeat of Elocanos who rebelled against the Spanish government's monopoly of Basi or rice. Wine, rice wine in 1821. Commissioned by the Spanish government, the paintings illustrate the bloody consequences of insurgent actions and an overt reminder of the, of the might of Spain over its colony. Simon Flores' painting, The Portrait of the Chiazan Family 1800, documents the family's affluence, the magnificent interior of the family's home, the mother's jewelry, the delicate fabric and embroidery of their clothing and their dignified poses. So other renowned, renowned miniature painters include Antonio Malantic, Isidro Arceo, Dionisio de Castro, and Justiniano Asuncion who also rendered portraits of individuals. Attention to detail in painting can also be observed in letras E figuras, combining names of individuals and figments of, of, of everyday life. This painting style became popular when Filipino natives required, acquired Spanish names in compliance with the degree implemented in 1884. Jose Honorato Lozano was a practitioner, practitioner of this art where the tipos del país are paintings painstakingly rendered within the graphic graphic outline of letters spelling out the name of a person or family in a watercolor on paper. Aside from miniature painters, academic painters also gained ground as they received their art studies in local schools or abroad as in the case of Juan Luna and Felix Hidalgo. So in 1821, Damian Domingo, the painter known for his Watercolor albums of Tipos del Pais established the first art school in the country right at his studio in Binondo, Manila. So the Academia de Dibujo was eventually absorbed by the school put up by the Real Sociedad Económica Filipina de Amigos del Pais where Domingo served as the rector. So the, the, they championed European academic styles in painting and the application of chiaroscuro or the play of light and dark and the con contrast between them to heighten the compositions of composition sense of drama. And the academia trained Lorenzo Guerrero painted the water carrier, which ex exemplifies the use of chiaroscuro in general of the late 19th century. The Pampanga born Simon Flores also produced genre scenes. A distinct example is the painting Premeras Letras 1890 which features a woman teaching a child how to read. So in 1884, the expatriates Juan Luna and Felix Resurrection Hidalgo won medals in, Mid in Madrid Exposition. Luna won gold for the Spolarium and Hidalgo garnered a silver medal for Virgines Cristianas Expuestas Al Papilaccio. So Luna's, Luna's depiction of a lifeless body of a gladiator being pulled across the Coliseum, Coliseum and Hidalgo's emphasis on a woman held captive have been interpreted as see, searing reminders of the people's Philippines oppression under Spanish colonization. And also, Luna's alignment with the Ilustrados propaganda movement is evident in the painting Espana y Filipinas, 
1886 featuring two women two women ascending a flight of stairs so personified by a woman in a flowing red gown mother Spain and patronizingly leads her change a petite brown-skinned woman representing Filipinas and lastly the Scolarium may be viewed at the National Art Gallery of the Philippines and Hispania y Filipinas at the Lopez Museum. However, Bertines, currently on long-term loan to the National Art Gallery in Singapore, is a part of the Metropolitan Museum of Manila or MET collection.